I've had a few people ask me about putting beer in the Belgian bottles with corks and I thought I could do a video on that. I got the idea from a brewing TV video with Dawson Keeler and Chip. Maybe I'll put a link to that video in the description of this video. So in addition to your regular bottling stuff, you're going to need a few extra things. You're going to need corks. Um, I'm sure you get them, you know, wherever you get your home brewing stuff. Uh, this is what I have. And you're going to need cages. Now, the cages are somewhat expensive if you just buy them new and unused, which you can certainly do. But also, I just got in the habit of saving them whenever I have a commercial beer or if I have a home brew that has one on there. I throw it in this bag. They can be reused two or three times before eventually they'll just break when you're twisting them and then you know that they're done. The other thing you're going to need is a, is a corker, not necessarily a floor corker. Um, some type of corker. This is the Portuguese wine red floor corker. I originally got it because I was doing a little bit of wine. Um, but then I learned that you could do the Belgian bottles with it. And that's kind of how it gets most of its use these days. So I'll show you how it's done. Let's see if I can give you the general idea, but if you want to see more details, go to that brewing TV video. You take a cork. Uh, I don't believe there's a lot of debate about trying to sanitize these. I think some people maybe do, but generally I don't think it's concer uh, a concern. You put it in here. The big bottles, now this thing just is spring-loaded. The big bottles, you don't have to do anything special. They go in here, you're, when you're pulling down on this, it compresses the cork and then this piece pushes it in. So let's see if that will work. And you can adjust this screw for a height. I kind of have it usually about at a place that works for me. So there you are, let me come around here. You want it sticking out, um, you know, a little bit about like that much. Uh, I'll get the cage on there in a sec. Another thing I like to do sometimes is the 375s. As you can see, that's it barely even fits up in there. So then you just need an extra little platform to get you a little bit more height. Again, get a cork. there you are so now we can get the cages on it not a lot to show here um, now this one's been twisted a couple of times we'll see if it breaks off um, you just get it all the way down you're going for getting this bottom part of the cage to be under the lip I just use a pen for this there's actually a little wire twister that's for this kind of purpose that you can buy Five, six, I believe six is kind of the, about the default uh, number of twists. Now, if your cork is sticking up too high and you can't um, get this down under here, uh, you know, you can, I think you can just, you could attempt to um, get it back in the cork or push it down a little bit more. Um, I don't know, it's just, you, after you do a few, you figure it out. I think that was about six. So there you go. Now sometimes what I do is I actually write on the corks before I put the cage on there for identifying them. But in this case I forgot so I'll just kind of get a marker and scribble on. Now the thing I did not mention is this beer has already been primed. Um, you, However you do it, you're either priming a whole batch or maybe you're priming by the bottle. But don't forget your sugar and if you need to pitch more yeast of course that's up to you as well. But this is it in a nutshell, and uh, give it a shot. 